Hello everybody, welcome to another episode from City Skylines, the Altengrad city. Today I would like to continue building close to one of the rivers that goes through the map and take a look at this river island. We of course need to build another bridge to it, but on the island itself I decided to build a monastery. So the monastery complex is obviously going to be very old, uh, but the bridge itself I decided to keep uh, modern. There obviously must have been some sort of an old bridge uh, connecting the island with the rest of the world, but uh, it was probably just demolished or, I don't know, destroyed by flood or something. And I really wanted to have a modern bridge go through the island. Now, through the island, obviously, because we also need to connect the other side of the river as well. So the bridge is going to be divided in uh, two parts, one longer and one obviously shorter, because the river uh, island is obviously not exactly in the middle middle of uh, of the river but it's not really important so i decided to construct uh, some sort of a, some sort of a new construction in here we are obviously still in some 1920s or something like that so this bridge that i'm trying to prepare here might be like 5 10 years old not exactly not exactly that old it's going to be very very new so we have also we have already b built a uh, an old bridge in the city from stone obviously stone blocks and uh, the first bridge that we built was obviously the the steel bridge so today i decided to build a concrete bridge just to uh, do something different i really wanted to have uh, a very specific type of structure for the bridge i really wanted to have these concrete uh, not very tall arches and uh, there's not really anything like that in the workshop. So I had to improvise, I had to uh, use procedural objects uh, again and uh, customize that uh, one particular uh, concrete arch in here to just, uh, you know, fit it uh, underneath uh, this road and, uh, you know, control the span, have it more realistic and the height and all those things. I basically copied, uh, again, from Prague, one uh, bridge in particular in terms of the span uh, dimensions and and the height and all that so it looks you know more or less realistic so like I said the bridge needs to be divided into parts that obviously goes uh, to the island and then it goes through the island to the other side of the river so that's exactly what I'm doing in here and just to make it a tiny bit more interesting I decided to make it curved like this on the island and uh, not have it completely straight uh, through it just so it's uh, you know more varied nothing nothing else really to it now, like I said, there probably used to be some sort of an old bridge connecting uh, the island. I'm not sure if it went through the island, probably yes, but like I said, it was probably destroyed or they just decided that uh, they want to include the trams to, uh, to cross the river in this place, so maybe they just built another bridge instead of uh, on instead of the old one you know all kinds of reasons might have been here but now let's uh, let's talk more about uh, the monastery itself so at first i really wanted to i really had big plans for the island i really wanted to build the monastery complex on the entire island and maybe maybe the bridge the old bridge maybe it didn't go through the middle of the island maybe that's uh, that's the new bridge that uh, cuts the island in half uh, maybe the old bridge was actually going into like a different part of the island where the entrance to the monastery used to be, probably. But uh, the new bridge uh, was just uh, needed to cut through the middle of the island, basically uh, cut it in half, divide it into, into places. But, uh, you know, again, there might have been more, more to it than just this. So uh, it was kind of clear. You can see that I positioned a lot of lot of buildings in here and basically like a puzzle tried to just uh, move around all these kinds of buildings and make them fit together. And I very, very early realized that uh, there's actually not that many buildings to choose from uh, for building a project like this, like a, like a religious structure, like a monastery, right? Uh, you obviously do have the churches or cathedrals, or I think this is a church, not a cathedral, I'm not sure. And uh, those are very nice. Those are obviously very, very nice buildings. And even for a real-life monastery, that's obviously the main highlight of the entire you know, complex of buildings, right? That's obviously the focus of, uh, of the entire thing. Now, I also wanted to position some sort of a gate, so we have a gatehouse in there. This looks like more like a, like a city gate than like a monastery gate. Yeah, I know, but again, there's not that many gates to choose from. And this one was actually not all that bad at all. 
So in the end, I decided that I'm only going to build a monastery on one half of the island. At first, I maybe wanted to put some gates right over the road that goes from the bridge, but uh, it was clear that there's just not that many buildings to choose from to build the monastery. So it only made sense to make it smaller and uh, not to use that many buildings, obviously. So we are only going to have the monastery on one half of the island. And uh, there's actually some uh, real life uh, precedent to this because uh, I was reading about some islands in Prague again. And uh, apparently there's this island that was actually divided in two by a bridge as well. But uh, back in the day, like medieval times and all that, uh, it was actually divided in two parts. Uh, like, uh, how do you say it? Well, the, the two parts of the bridge, uh, sorry, two parts of the island belonged to different owners. So it makes sense uh, from historical point of view that maybe the monastery was allowed to be built only on one half of the island. So that might be the explanation of uh, why it's positioned like this, why it's not built on the entire island and the gates are not positioned, uh, you know, right and on the entrances to the island, but it's like this, you know, so some kind of an his some kind of a, a weak historical explanation to to it to justify why I'm not building it on the entire island. Now, what's going to be on the other half of the island, you might ask, because uh, I it might not look exactly that good to just position any kind of buildings really on the opposite side of the island, like residential buildings or just you know the regular block uh, houses. So I decided to keep it completely open. I decided to just uh, put a lot of trees, some uh, pedestrian paths uh, through the place and just make it very, very green. Again, there's uh, there's uh, the real life things uh, as well to take inspiration from this. So it's not completely made up and uh, it's looking very nice. It's looking very nice uh, for this particular build. I uh, took uh, greater care to actually put uh, a more varied selection of trees to this part of the island and, uh, you know, just make it more 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 fitting to the entire place. So that's uh, that's the path that I'm doing in here. Uh, the island is, by the way, very tall. So I had to make sure that uh, it's going closer to the river, especially in uh, in this part where the green is going to be and uh, just make the paths fit uh, to the to the outline of the island and then just do some detailing and stuff like that. There might be some changes to this place uh, and as we go uh, you know, forward in time, but I don't really want to spoil it too much. Let's just say that I already do have plans how this place is going to look like in maybe 50, 40 years, something like that, all right? But right now it's just going to be basically a park. It's just going to be one great river park like uh, like I'm doing in here. I'm obviously using a lot of willow trees, which uh, makes sense. Definitely makes sense to have them around uh, around the you know bodies of water like we have in here. And uh, then just all kinds of uh, different trees all around the place. It just occurred to me that uh, doing changes as we progress in time is actually going to be really difficult. I'm not sure if uh, if I've done that in uh, previously in any kind of uh, city that I ever built in this game. Basically just uh, deleting some parts of the city or some elements of the city, some city blocks or, you know, things like that and uh, just completely reworking them. I'm not sure that I'm really doing that. And this is probably going to be the first time that I'm ever going to do that. Well, we are not really there yet, but uh, we will, you know, eventually reach that time. So it's going to be kind of difficult to undo, basically undo all this, all this work to just replace it. But to be completely honest, that's going to add the quite a lot of realism to the entire series because in real life you also have nice places that were just uh, brutally destroyed or replaced, reworked with uh, something else and uh, maybe people are not going to exactly like it. In real life many people obviously don't like changes that were done to many central European cities in uh, obviously the like 50 years ago, like 60s, 70s, something like that. So, you know, it's going to be just interesting how it's going to develop in, in this series because it's obviously just me building the city. It's not like in real life where people just built something like a long time ago, then those people usually just, you know, died of old age. And then, uh, you know, the newer generations just decided to just rework it, you know, toss it away and uh, just rework, completely redesign some parts of the cities. But they no longer had the connection, really, emotional connection, let's call it, to some 
uh, elements, some kind of architecture pieces of the city and uh, so on. But uh, uh, in Altengrad it's obviously a bit different because I built all of it and I will have to make the decision to then uh, demolish it and probably rework it. But if I want to keep it realistic, then I will obviously have to make those kinds of decisions. So we will see, we will see. I'm thinking that I'm probably not really do that many changes to the old, old town. But uh, as we obviously progress further away from the old town, the architecture is not really going to be all that super, uh, super valuable, let's call it. So uh, as the pro as the time progress forward, then it would be it would be obviously those buildings that would be kind of uh, endangered of uh, just uh, doing some changes, right? But anyway, that's just some uh, that's just some idea that's uh, that's probably uh, worth keeping in mind. But uh, let's uh, let's continue let's continue talking about the island, the monastery that we are building over here. So uh, the inspiration for this place actually came from real life again. I recently visited uh, one monastery and uh, I really wanted to, put, to build uh, elements from it in here. But like I said before, the buildings that you have at your disposal from the workshop, there are some buildings, don't get me wrong, again, uh, the authors from the workshop are doing an amazing job with some of these buildings. But uh, some specialized buildings, so like uh, some specialized industrial buildings even. And, uh, you know, if you want to do these kinds of projects like a monastery, then uh, the buildings are just not there. There's uh, quite a lot of, uh, you know, offices, residential and all that. But... Uh, some kind of like dormitory, old medieval dormitory buildings for uh, some of these uh, places. It's just not there. So we have to improvise quite a lot and uh, do maybe something different. So this monastery, I'm thinking, was uh, changed quite a lot as the time went forward. You can even see that with the architectural styles, obviously. There's uh, some Renaissance buildings mixed with uh, some Baroque styles as well. So this place definitely saw uh, quite a lot of changes as the time went forward. And maybe even uh, parts of this entire island were just completely reworked. And uh, some buildings were just demolished and only the you know nicest buildings remained, maybe, you know, stuff like that. There probably used to be some walls surrounding this part of the island as well for the monastery. Maybe that was not needed anymore, so they got rid of that too. So what I'm doing in here is uh, some some sort of a, some sort of an orchard. Well, I didn't really want to build an orchard at this time. I wanted to build some farm field or maybe something like this, but it's not exactly all that large for uh, some farm fields. So I decided to build an orchard because there's quite a lot of uh, trees that I actually do have for doing an orchard, especially especially this one. I think this this one is is a pear tree. A pear is that pronounced pear? I'm not sure. You know th those kinds of uh, fruit things uh, similar to apples and uh, some apple trees as well on this uh, side of it to just make it slightly varied to not have the same trees uh, you know all over again in uh, in the entire thing. And uh, then I'm going to continue probably doing some uh, tiny little details again to the to the to the gardens in here. Uh, some different flowers, maybe some herbs also are going to be uh, are going to be grown in here. Uh, obviously these beehives as well, because why not? It kind of makes sense to have them over here. I was not exactly sure if you if it makes sense to to have bees on an island. Maybe they're going to like uh, fly away, <laughs> never to return or something. But you know, it's just a tiny little detail for this place, so it's fine, it's fine. So in the time lapse, it's gonna be a whole lot of detailing on this island in the monastery. So let's talk a bit more about the plans for the future episode, for the future of the city. So in the next episode, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be the train depot episode. Uh, it's basically going to be an addition to the train station that we started doing the, the last time. And it's going to take us uh, slightly further away from uh, from the old town, from the downtown of the city. Now that that will result in quite a lot of places that we still need to fill inside the old town. So it's going to take us probably maybe like five, seven episodes to finish the old town still. But after that is going to be done, I think I'm going to make a switch in in the in the time periods that we have. I think I'm probably going to jump to the 1930s because I figured that there's not really going to be that many changes. There's not going to be that many buildings that are going to just uh, be demolished uh, in this in this time period to just make way for something more recently built. Because uh, this part of the city is probably going to stay all the way to the modern times 
almost intact, uh, almost. Obviously some things are going to change, but I think in the 1930s there's not going to be any changes. But the 1930 change is definitely going to allow me to construct some uh, very typical architecture for the 1930s. There's quite a lot of buildings in the workshop that, that are based on real-life structures that were built uh, just before the Second World War in uh, in all kinds of places in Europe. So I would like to do those buildings and uh, that means that we need to advance in time. I think that the 1930s is probably going to be the time period we are going to stay in for the longest time because I really really want to prepare for the war period quite a lot because the war period is obviously going to see uh, it, the city is going to see in that time period some changes, some destruction of course, and that destruction is then going to lead to some uh, more reworks and just changes in uh, some city blocks and whole city parts and you know stuff like that. So obviously the city parts that are going to be changed need to be finished before that, right? That makes sense. We still need to expand the city quite a lot. We need to build some villages around the city itself that are, you know, slowly going to be consumed by the expanding city as the time goes forward in the 50s, 60s, 70s and all that. So that's the plans for the next episodes, for the couple of next episodes and some rough outline of the distant future of this series because this series is obviously going to still take uh, quite some time before it's concluded. Anyway, guys, I think that's uh, all for today's video. I'm obviously going to be talking more about these plans as the city goes forward, so probably even in the next episode where I'm going to build the train depot like I already mentioned. Like always, there's now going to be the cinematics showing the finished monastery we built in today's episode. Thank you guys for watching this part of Altengrad. I hope you liked it. If you did, then you can click the thumbs up underneath the video. And if you really like this series and the channel, then you can directly support by becoming a channel member. And of course, if you are new here, you can subscribe to the channel as well. I will see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Goodbye.